Get a grip of yourself, man. Come, take up yoga, you'll find it beneficial, man. <laughs> Members will always find the chair a friend if they wish to question a minister. But it ought... Yes, they will. <laughs> And with world oil prices falling and revenues from the North Sea forecast by the OBR today to be down 94%, we would have seen catastrophic cuts in Scottish public services. But thankfully, Scotland remains a strong part of a stronger United Kingdom. Now, uh, Mr Speaker, the Right Honourable Member and former Home Secretary, the Member for Hull West and Hessel, has personally asked me to support his city's Year of Culture, and I am happy to do so with a grant. His campaign has contributed to the arts, while his front bench contributes to comedy. <laughs> Both sides are still shouting their heads off. It's very down market, it's very low grade, it's very widely deprecated by the public. How it is that people think that it's legitimate to behave in that way and try to reconnect with the electorate dissolution with politics is just bizarre. And if some people are so unintelligent they still can't grasp the point, I pity them. John McDonnell. And as my honourable colleague member for Wakefield said this morning, if hot air built homes, then Conservative ministers would have solved our housing crisis. Over the last year, the Chancellor has forced himself onto building sites all around the country to secure a photo with a high-vis jacket. When the Chancellor did his Bob the Builder speech at Tory party conference, what he didn't tell delegates was that his abysmal investment record. To assist Comrade Osborne in his dealings with his newfound comrades, I brought him along Mao's little red book. <laughs> Let me quote. Let me quote, Mr Speaker. I want to hear about the contents of the book. <laughs> I think you'll find I think you'll find this invaluable. But we must not to pretend to know what we do not know. I thought it would come in handy for him in his new relationship. <laughs>